Jesus said that we would do his miracles and even greater works than he did we will do. This is an outstanding statement that Jesus gave to us. That we would work the miracles that he did in his name. That we would do even greater miracles than he did. Because he was going to the Father, he didn't have time to do more. Miracles grow. Do some and more come. Preach the power of God and the miracles will follow. Preach miracles and miracles will follow. Jesus confirms his word with signs and wonders. The mighty power of God is given into human hands that we may minister it in the name of Jesus Christ, being his hands and his feet, his mouth and his mouthpiece. Jesus wants all his servants to minister his works. Without the mighty miracles, words are just words. But when you have the power of God backing up your words, then people will believe that Jesus is present and that Jesus is still alive. Which is why he sits in heaven right now at the side of the Father, at the right hand of God, and while God puts all his enemies under his feet, through his church, which is us, the body of Christ, those who believe, those who just don't believe in Jesus in a manger, but believe that Jesus is now in his people, ministry, speaking through my mouth, they, uh, putting anointing power through my hands, and healing the sick and doing miracles, because Jesus is alive. He's alive today. He's alive for you. If you call on his name, he said you'll never be ashamed. Jesus is the author of life. All things were made by him, and there was nothing made that wasn't made. Jesus Christ is the author and the finisher of your faith. He began it, and he will complete it. This is what he promises. And Jesus Christ wants to reproduce himself through you. He wants you to carry his name, his power, and his preaching, and his anointing, his miracles. Jesus wasn't a miracle worker for 30 years. But his life pleased God, and God used him mightily as Jesus of Nazareth, son of man. Jesus of Nazareth had to get anointed like we do. The Spirit of God had to come upon him and put power in his hands to heal the sick. Although Jesus was a willing and compliant servant, he was completely a channel of God and said, I don't speak anything except that God speaks through me. The Holy Spirit was, a temp was in his temple, his body. The woman with the issue of blood came up from behind Jesus without Jesus' knowledge and touched him in faith. Power going through Jesus was noticed by him leaving his body. This woman touched his coat and something was transferred through Jesus Christ into her body and made her well. She was bleeding internally for many, many years, 12 years, and she had spent everything she could in trying to get herself fixed. But in one touch in faith of Jesus and she was healed. Jesus noticed power going out of him and turned around and said who touched me and he found the woman eventually many people touched him nothing happened but she touched him in faith believing and something happened power was transferred from his body without his mind being involved without conscious thought at all it was transferred through him as a channel into her body and healed her without his conscious mind. The healing happened and was done by the time he started to think, Jesus of Nazareth that is, he started to think, what happened? Something went through me. His power went through him to her. This invisible force, this superhuman, supernatural power, 
that anointed Jesus in his life and ministry and anoints us or is available to anoint us today. I've been into houses where sick people are waiting for prayer and they got healed when I walked in the door. And this is amazing to me. I was ready to pray, but no need to pray. The anointing healed them. You see, the presence needs to come through us. We are the temple, the house of God. While we still live in this body, we can draw the power and the anointing of God upon us and minister it to people. We are ministers of the greatest super spirit that ever lived in this universe, the creator of all beings. And the waters, it says in the beginning, Genesis 1, and the Holy Spirit hovered over the waters. Then God said, let there be dry land. You see, when you've got the Holy Spirit, you can speak words prophetically and a power is given to them. See, he is resident in us doing things without our mind being involved. When we speak in tongues, it's got nothing to do with our mind. When we speak from the Holy Spirit, it has nothing to do with our mind. But it has got something to do with him. Because the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 14 that he gives us the utterance. The Holy Spirit gives us the speaking in tongues utterance. This supernatural and superhuman being is greater than any human force or any demon force or any angelic force that the world has ever seen. It is the greatest of all spirits, the Holy Spirit of God. The greatest being that ever existed on planet Earth, and he lives in us. It tells us in Romans chapter 8, and verse 11, that the spirit of him who raised Jesus Christ from the dead dwells in us and will bring life to your mortal body. This being resident in us is available to go through us into other people and even into our bodies to make them well. We are the temple of the greatest spirit the world has ever discerned. This spirit is for you and for me and brings to us the miracles of Jesus and the doctrines of Jesus Christ. This spirit is God, the Holy Spirit. I will send you a comforter, a helper, I will send you one who will come beside you and live and dwell in you. And we, my Father and me, Jesus Christ said, will make our home within you. This great superhuman spirit is the magnificent creator of all life. And it dwells in us. Isn't that wonderful? You can be a minister of his miracle power the same way as he did things. That's what he said. I will do, you will do these works, these miracle works. You will raise the dead. You will heal the sick. You will open blind eyes and deaf ears. You will do the supernatural works of God because I authorize you in my name. He went out of the world, but his presence remains. It remains in us. And his power remains. It remains in us. It's through the church or the body of Christ, through the believers, that God destroys death on this earth and this planet. You see, come up here, he says to his son. Sit at my right hand while I make your enemies your footstool. The enemies of Jesus Christ is anything to do with death in any part of life and any agents that house the spirit of death must also be destroyed. All death will be destroyed before the end comes and this world is restored back to its original state that God intended it to be from the beginning. We are the agents of life.
god bless you.